Today, we are going to continue our discussion regarding the aggregate properties. Today, we are going to talk about the cleanest and the, del the deleterious materials. So, what does it mean by deleterious substance or deleterious materials? It means that any material that badly affects the quality of Portland cement or asphalt cement made with aggregate. So, any material that is going to adversely affect the quality of the Portland cement is going to be classified as deleterious material. Here we have example for uh, such uh, substance like organic impurities. Sometimes uh, organic impurities is going to be found uh, in my concrete or in my uh, asphalt concrete. And the problem with organic impurities, they can delay the setting and the hardening of the concrete. And sometimes they may reduce the strength gain. And that is going to cause de deterioration. Also, any uh, uh, material that can pass through sieve number 200, which means that I'm going to have fillers, very fine materials. And those kind of materials are going to uh, weaken the bond and also they may increase water materials requirements. We discussed the idea that uh, the smaller particles we have, the more uh, service we are going to get, right? So if you are going to have very fine materials, that means the water requirement is going to increase as well. Also, sometimes we are going to have low density material uh, like the coal, uh, in my aggregate and that can reduce the uh, durability and sometimes they may cause pop outs or stains in my uh, concrete or in my asphalt concrete also we may find clay lumps uh, inside my concrete and that can cause pop out and can, can reduce the durability and the wear resistance of course the term durability it means the, uh, uh, the resistance of the material to the uh, weathering or any other uh, factors that can badly uh, reduce the uh, uh, performance of the concrete. Also, sometimes uh, I may find soft particles with my aggregates. And also, those soft particles can reduce durability and wear resistance, and also if they can cause pop outs. The next property, which is alkali aggregate reactivity. Before you use your aggregate, you need to know whether your aggregate is going to contain silica or not, because some aggregate contains uh, silica, and the silica is going to react with the Portland cement especially in warm and humid climate. So it's very important to uh, test your aggregate to know whether your aggregate contain silica or not. Because the silica is going to react with alkalis in, in the Portland cement. And that can cause excessive expansion, cracking and pop out, like you can see here. So if your aggregate contains silica, then you are going to have a problem. Also, carbonates in aggregate can make something like that. But uh, the effect is less than the effect of the silica. So how we are going to minimize the activity between the silica and the alkalis in the Portland cement? We have many strategies. We could use cement type 2. Later on in the uh, next chapter, we will, learn, we will learn that we have uh, uh, five main types of cements. And in order to minimize the uh, alkali content of the Portland cement, we are going to use uh, cement type 2. And also here we say that, uh, uh, especially in warm and humid climates, 
So if you are going to keep your co concrete as dry as possible, then you are going to reduce that reaction here. Also, sweetening the aggregate. Make your aggregate sweet by add crushed limestone to the aggregate. Also, this process is going to reduce the uh, reaction between the silica and the alkalis in the Portland cement. So, before you use your aggregate, make sure that your aggregate does not contain silica or carbonates. If you don't have any options, you need to, uh, to use one of these strategies in order to minimize uh, the reactivity between the silica and the alkalis. Also, we have the asphalt affinity. Like you can see here in this figure, all of you, uh, see this figure a lot. We have asphalt, concrete, but you, like you can see here, this layer, this layer here is damaged. And that because of the action of the water. Sometimes we have rain and because uh, we have difficulties in order to discharge the water and the water is going to stay here and uh, the, the action of the water is going to uh, separate the asphalt film from the aggregate. We mentioned uh, in this uh, uh, course, we mentioned that the asphalt concrete is made from asphalt plus aggregate. So the purpose of the uh, asphalt is to bind the aggregate together. The purpose of the asphalt is to bind the aggregate together. So, if the water is going to take out the asphalt fill, the layer of the asphalt, then the uh, bond between the aggregate is going to be lost. And as a result, we are going to see damage like this one here. So, asphalt affinity is defined as a separation of the asphalt film. So, the asphalt film, that layer, keep the aggregate together, is going to be separated from the aggregate through the action of the water and that of course it can reduce the durability of the asphalt concrete which means that the concrete is not going to last for a long time if we are going to reduce the durability that means the uh, uh, the asphalt concrete was, will, will not going to live longer durability uh, it means that i'm going to build something that can last for a very long time and uh, and and this action of the water is going to uh, 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 to have a, a pavement failure. The mechanism causing the stripping are complex and not fully understood. How the how we lost the uh, uh, bond between the asphalt and the aggregate, the mechanism itself is complex and not fully understood. Finally. Uh, we need to talk about sampling aggregates. Of course, we uh, use uh, a big amount of aggregate, actually huge amount of aggregates, because like we have seen in the previous lectures, the aggregates uh, is uh, uh, the main component, either in uh, concrete, in, uh, in uh, Portland cement con concrete or asphalt concrete, the main uh, 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 ingredient, ingredient. So, how I'm going to take a sample of the aggregate for testing? Remember, in the first lecture, we mentioned that in order to take a sample, the sample should be random and should be representative of the entire stock pile. And why taking sample of the aggregate is difficult? It's difficult because we are going to have uh, segregation problems. We are going to have segregation problems. So what does it mean by segregation? Segregation, that means we have non-uniform distribution of the coarse and the fine aggregate components. So if I'm going to have huge amount of aggregates, the distribution of the aggregate is not going to be uniform. 
due to the segregation. And that is why the uh, uh, taken sample from the aggregate should be uh, done with specific uh, uh, steps. You need to take sample from the top, top of the st uh, stockpile, and also you need to take a sample from the middle, and also you need to take a sample from the bottom of the st stockpile at several locations around the stockpile diameter. I'm going to do that to make sure that uh, I have uniform distribution of the course and the fine aggregate components. So the stockpile is going to look like a mountain. So we need to take a sample from the top, sample from the middle, and the sample from the bottom at different location. By doing that, I'll be able to take uh, a random and representative sample of the entire stockpile. So now I'm going to have a large sample. Let's say that I'm going to have uh, 10 kilogram or 20 kilogram. But like we have learned uh, in the lab, we are going to take only about two kilogram representative sample, right? Now I have a bigger sample. So what should I do about it? So I have uh, two ways of doing it either to use the sample splitter i'm going to put the aggregate here and that device is going to give me identical samples so here i'm going to have only one sample but when i put the uh, aggregate here the device is going to convert uh, the sample into two identical samples so let's say i have 10 kilogram then i'm going to have five kilogram and another five kilogram because I want to have uh, a sample uh, with uh, 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 with a uh, uh, low amount. Also, I can use the uh, quartering, the quartering method. I'm going to place my sample to the ground and I'm going to use that divider in order to divide the sample into four quarters. I'm going to have this quarter, this quarter, this quarter, and that quarter. Four quarters. So we are going to say that the uh, uh, sample here is identical to the sample there, and it's identical to sample here, and it's also identical to the sample there. So if I'm going to have, let's say, uh, uh, 20 uh, kilogram, then this one is going to be like five kilogram, five kilogram, five, five kilogram, five kilogram. So through the sample splitter or the quartering method, I'll be able uh, to reduce the sample size from larger stock to small uh, sample, from one to five kilo, kilogram sample. So uh, I'm going to stop here regarding the aggregates. Uh, we discussed many properties, and uh, the, the most important one by far is the uh, uh, sieve analysis. The most important uh, property is the sieve analysis. This one is very important test. The most important one by far is the sieve analysis, and uh, uh, for the uh, uh, Portland cement concrete, we have more properties important than the others. And similarly, regarding the uh, asphalt concrete, also we have more uh, a certain properties more important than others. So I need to know uh, uh, wh why I need the aggregate. Do you need the aggregate in order to uh, produce uh, Portland cement concrete, or you need the aggregate in order to produce asphalt concrete? then you are going to focus on uh, specific properties. Okay, so I'm going to end the, this lecture here. We are going to start new lecture.